So someone wanted to know whether you can tell what the cause of an optic neuropathy is just from the visual field. And the short answer is no. However, the long answer is there's certain types of optic neuropathies that have predilection for different types of nerve fiber layer problems. And so the papillomacular bundle, papillomacular bundle, which controls the central vision, is highly metabolically active. And therefore, highly metabolically active tissue responds earlier to diseases that affect metabolic activity in that location. And so mitochondrial disease, like labor hereditary optic neuropathy, or toxins like alcohol-related B12 or folate deficiency, or methanol exposure, they produce toxic effects on the papillomacular that takes your center vision right away. So these cause central scotomas. So bilateral central scotoma, you should be thinking toxic, nutritional, and labor. In contrast, things that affect the longer fibers, like the temporal fiber, that have, are related to pressure-related effects at the lamina cribosa, cause compression differentially on the axons that are in the periphery. And so glaucomatous field defects are often nasal steps because this temporal fiber has differential sensitivity to pressure. And it doesn't matter whether that pressure is intraocular pressure, intrapapillary pressure, or intracranial pressure, the pressure-related visual field defects are nerve fiber layer defects that spare the papillomacular bundle until very, very late. And so things like papilledema, glaucoma, and intrapapillary drusen spare the papillomacular bundle. And so if you lose your central acuity, you should really be thinking that maybe they have something else and not the pressure-related phenomenon alone, or that it's very end stage and late, or that it's fulminant, like acute angle closure glaucoma or acute fulminant IIH, or ischemic optic neuropathy in Drusen. Because the blood supply of the eye is a superior and inferior arcade, both in the optic nerve and in the retina, altitudinal field defects suggest vascular etiologies, most commonly non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy in optic neuropathies. But any optic neuropathy can produce any field defect, including central or nerve fiber layer. The thing it cannot do is respect the vertical meridian until it's very, very close to the chiasm. So if it is an optic neuropathy and it's monocular and it's respecting the vertical meridian, that lesion is close to the junction of the optic nerve and chiasm. It comes in two flavors, so the optic nerve can be damaged at the junction of the optic nerve, either a monocular temporal hemianoptic field defect, which is called the junctional scotoma of Traquair, or it could involve the chiasm or the crossing nasal fiber producing a central scotoma and a superior temporal field defect in the fellow eye, and that thing is called the junctional scotoma. So we really shouldn't have vertical respect on the field unless you're close to the junction that needs to be imaged. Nerve fiber layer defects respect the horizontal meridian and are arcuate in shape from pressure related phenomenon and central papillomacular bundle defects produce central scotomas and if it's bilateral you should be thinking nutritional toxic and labor hereditary optic neuropathy. Otherwise any optic neuropathy can produce any field defect at once but you can somewhat use the field to try and branch out between central and peripheral. But in general, if it's a nerve fiber layer defect, you can't tell what the cause of the optic neuropathy is.